Um, okay, so let's go to you guys. Let's see what's going on here. And okay, so first of all, do you have any questions regarding automation or questions regarding anything else? Whatever you have in mind, I'm yours for the next uh, 40 minutes. So whatever you need. Books question. Kevin, you have more than one company or business in one books account? Yes, you can. I have two businesses, but only one Zo one account. Yes. So let's go to Zo Books. I will show you how to do it, but I will also tell you what's the problem with it. Do you hear me now? I think I finally got my mic to work. Okay, great. Yes, yes. How are you today? I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm sorry uh, it wouldn't let me uh, select the right mic at first, but I got it now. It's all good, my friend. Let me let me help you with the question. So if you go to the picture on the top right and you see you have here manage. Yes. If you click on manage, you can create new organization. Okay. Okay, so that will be another set of books. It will be a different, different subscription. So you will not pay another ZO one, but it will be only for ZO books. Oh, okay. uh, so, so you, so I will have to pay or my client will have to pay another subscription just for books. You will need to pay just for the books, but you don't need to, to add this add on for all your organization. You all just right. add it for the set of books. Okay, so that was my question because what happened? We we did this, and then it said that uh, that that was a free account for right now, and would not uh, you know we'd have to pay later, and that's what I was confused about. So yep, I yep, I got it. Okay. And the disadvantage when you are in your ZO CRM, you have a way to go to the marketplace, click on ZO, and then you have your ZO Finance Suite. And you can integrate your CRM with Zoho Books, which is making the experience much better. It's very, yeah. very powerful. But when you have your second organization, it will not be bound to your Zoho CRM. So it's a, basically it's a one-to-one -one from CRM to books, but it's not including your second Zoho Books. Okay. So that's the disadvantage. Okay. Um, I was in this story multiple times. There is really no CRM that's connected to more than one uh, set of books. So I try to, to give Zo an example of they did it. Why can't you? And I couldn't find it. Okay. Also with QuickBooks and other systems, every set of books is independent and is not correlating to other books. So. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Okay, thank you. No I, problem. I, I have one other question. Do you have time? Uh, yeah, of that? course. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so I have another client that um, they split into two companies. Each one of them has Zoho One, and what I did is I did a backup, a true backup of the database. I imported that into the new company's Zoho One account. And mm -hmm. then I deleted the accounts that did not belong to each company and everything is fine. But um, they decided to move a couple of more accounts between them. And I'm having trouble figuring out how I can just move one account from, say, account one to account two. Uh, be, I, can, I can just do an export, but that doesn't keep everything connected together. You know, only a backup seems to keep everything together. But how can I just get one client account that has contacts, deals, accounts? How can I get from that one ZO one, one to another ZO one? Yes. Yes. Ugh, nasty. Um, what what I would do, but I have a little bit more tools than you. I assume that you are not a developer, are you? No, I am not. Yeah. So if you do it one by one, so let's say that you have, let's say, an account or a deal, you are able to grab the information for the specific record. That's right. While in Deluge, I can grab, let's say, a contact 
and I can tell Deluge, bring me all the deals related to this contact. Bring me all the tasks, all the activities, all the, you know, accounts, deals, what are quotes. So I can grab everything in Deluge, package it together and send it using a webhook to your new system. But it's okay. not something that you, know, you can do without code. Okay. Um, but what so about if you just do a backup and you filter the, the, the record? Oh, yeah, but you need to do it for each CSV. Right. Uh, yeah. Painful. It is. Uh, yeah. So uh, you are, you're our partner. Um, we've got you set up as our partner. Um, so that's something that you could do for us. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not that difficult. And once you have those scripts, um, they can be done in a way that, let's say, that if you have the contact, we can have some kind of a button that will say uh, migrate. And when you click on this record, it will do the magic and send everything to the other system. Okay. Or you can do it on a batch of of records. Do you uh, do you have any idea what the length of time is to develop that so I can give my uh, no, give the... but but co contact us and we'll go over it together. Okay. And you you will know before we start anything. You will know how much time it will take. Fantastic. Okay. okay. Thank you. Perfect. No problem. Lisa, I always like to see Lisa. How are you, Lisa? Uh, oh, you don't have mic. Sorry. One second. Lisa. Let's see. Yeah. Lisa, can can you speak? Do you have mic by any chance? Okay, do. Do I? Can you hey, Lisa. Hey. Oh, how are you? Good. How are you? Long time. Where have you been? I know. I took a little time off, but I'm back. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Had some other meetings last week, so only made part of the, the session, which was kind of a bummer, but <laughs> I got to hear about a half hour. But well, yeah, I saw the segmentation part where you can segment things, and I'm wondering, is that only in leads? Does that apply to accounts as well? And You have a few. Yeah, you have a few modules that you can run on. Okay. Um. Yeah, so it's leads, accounts, contacts, vendors, custom modules, that's it. Oh, I can do custom too. Okay. Yeah, the company tasks, company projects, location, all those, uh, incoming data, all those are custom modules. Mm -hmm. So you can do accounts, contacts. I don't see deals, you know? I don't either. I wonder why. Oh, right. Deal. Yeah, yeah. So, so the idea of the segmentation is to segment based on um, people. And a deal is not a person. Oh, okay. So let's say that uh, you can create a segmentation, and I will create a separate video about it. How to segment all the clients. Let me show you one second. I will not dive too deep into it. But let's say I want to segment my clients and to categorize them based on uh, invoices so i can see how much money they spent with me and based on that you can see for example you can categorize group of people that spent more than hundred thousand a year they will be your a group and another group will be uh 50 to 100 they will be b group and when a group is calling you give them more attention than b this is usually how clients are using uh, the segmentation. So that's that's really the concept here. It's just giving you some kind of like a buckets of, of clients. Very okay. cool. All right. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to figure out. I know in one of your other videos, you did something with line of business, and it talks about two different types of, like within our company, there's like different um, kind of lines of business. And mm -hmm. so I was debating on whether to, I, I really don't want to create a separate module. I'd like to do it in standard, just hide the fields like you recommended, but our standard module has. Say, so, yeah. With the uh, layout rules. Yeah. I don't really want to use layout rules either, but I guess like, well, yeah, with layout rules. Yes. Yep. Okay. I can do that. But I was wondering if the segmentation thing would be something that would segment that type of, um, client or account. Not really. Not really. Okay. 
You have uh, three criteria for segmentation in this module. It's recency. So when was the last time that this person contacted me? So let's yeah. say if you didn't talk to me for a year, you are not such a close co contact. But if, if it was last month, makes more sense. Yeah. The second one is the, the uh, frequency. How often do you buy? Or how often do you contact me? Or how often we have a connection? And the third one is money. How much money you spend with me? Okay. So those three create the segmentation. But if you try to do it like that, I would just create, as you said, basically some kind of a drop down that's saying uh, what is the customer type. And based on that, you can also run reports and segmentation. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So that, that, that might work and it's a very quick solution. In five minutes, you have it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. I can share with you that uh, lots of good stuff will come from Zoe in the next uh, three to six months. I cannot talk about what is going to happen, but be ready. Um, it's really, really significant stuff coming in. Really, 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 really. Um, with Salesforce, the structure is a bit different in terms of, uh, I think, the deals and the quotes. They have a different structure. And yeah, they have something also with accounts. I'm not, not, not really sure. I'm not a sales for, I didn't do sales for like past four years. Um, the accounts, if you're a, a, a B2C, for example, which is business to customer, you can still use the accounts to group the contacts. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So it will make sense. And it's also common for real estate companies, mortgage brokers, wealth managers, lots of businesses that are dealing with uh, the husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend. So if I will rename it, let's say to families, And I hope you, you understand what I'm doing here. So let's say that I have here a contact. So let's create two contacts. Okay, I have here enough contacts. So let's say that uh, Test Amazing and Test Eric, both of them are from the same household. Might be husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. I can assign both of them. So I'm taking Test. I'm creating... A, a new family, second, family name will be the test family. And I will go to the other dude and I will change him also to the test family. Where is my test family? Here it is. Okay. So now when I'm going to the test family, I can see both contacts under the same family. And also when I will go and create a deal, in the deal I can have also here, the test family, for example, And then everything now is tied together. So for B2C, uh, it's or that you go to the modules and fields, you go to the organized modules and you just add the family's accounts module. Okay, so you just click here and it's gone. Or you rename it to something that makes more sense for you and you use it. One more thing that if you're going with the families, which is a nice trick that I think uh, lots of companies can use, in the lead section, you can click on the lead itself and you will see a company. Now, the company, whenever you have your company and you click on convert, it's going to create, uh, let's click here, it's going to create a new account 
and the account in our case, it's a family. So I would go to the translation and change the company to family or family name. And then from the beginning, when a lead comes in, the field will say family name. You enter it, the family name, and on conversion, it will create a new family, right? Because it's not really a company. So that's something that you can do from uh, the translation. And also uh, in the uh, modules and fields, you can do the rename the same way that uh, I did it. So I think, I think it can work. Let me just put it back. Perfect. Question about using multiple option for business types in layout rules. Okay. Let's say uh, we'll go to accounts. Accounts would be a good place for that. The idea is to have business, uh, what it was, business type, yeah. So let's say that we have business type, and if the account is business, uh, business type is payroll, it will show some fields. And if the account type is HR, it will so show different fields. And that's something we touched multiple times on, on those webinars, but we'll do it again. It will take us a second. So if we have here the business type. There it is. Cut. Carol? Yes, I'm sorry. yes, I just got my mic working. I'm sorry. I didn't Perfect. Understand. No, no, I, I know it's a challenge. How are you? I'm I'm well. How are you? Um, Very good. So so I think you're actually addressing ex the problem. Here here's the problem. I've created that pick uh, list by different um, business types. So in our case, um, people might book something in Greece, or they might book something in Chicago, um, or they might. Um, be uh, a consulting client, and so um, when they when when they first enter get into the system, we're choosing one of those three fields. But there there can be crossovers. So maybe this year they're a Greek client, but next year they're a Chicago client. My question is, what happens next year when I want to update them? And so do I need to then go back to that pick list, change them from Greece to Chicago and where, what happens to the data that was entered previously for. So you're talking about what happens when you're changing the selection, if it's hiding the data that you had before. Right. If you, create the sections in the right way, they're not supposed to be any problem. So let's say that if I'm interested in Greece and then I'm interested in Chicago, which are totally different things, there should be in your page, let's say a section that is for everyone and that the information is relevant for Chicago and Greece. But you can have here another section, the section will be, let's say, Greece. Uh, I don't know if you write Greece like that, but anyway, I hope so. <laughs> of course. So if you, if for example, in the Greece section, you have here, let's say, to how many islands you like to, to go, if you like to visit, you know, historic areas in Greece. So those will be relevant only to Greece. But when the person changes to Chicago, when you change the business type to Chicago, this will be gone and you see Chicago now, but all the other areas that are relevant for Chicago and Greece, for example, preference, do you like adults only or with kids? Do you like to see sightseeing or just enjoy a good meal? Whatever it is, those will be in the general area while the specific sections will be only for the specific location. Okay. Is that making sense? Yeah, yeah. And and if next, the year after, they go back to Greece and I change the client, con the, 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 the drop-down to Greece again, everything from the previous entries is still there. It's just been hidden when I changed to Chicago. Okay. Yep, you are correct. Yep. Exactly. That's it. All right, thank you. No, no problem. So the question is, if there is a way basically to assign multiple people 
to one deal. Am I correct, Carol? Yes, you're correct. And I just have to ask, this is a huge issue for us. Mm -hmm. Are you going to record this? Is this being recorded? Can you share this with us? Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. Yes, that's the exact question. So these are not, so, so we might have four couples traveling together mm -hmm. and um, I create one trip for them. Mm -hmm. So the trip, when I'm pricing the trip is based upon eight, these eight people, but I need for, I need to invoice each couple separately or, you know, maybe eight friends. I need to invoice each, each participant in the, um, in this trip separately without messing up the, you know, the, the financials for, from the vendor side, you know, of the, of the suppliers that I'm paying or the vendors, the vendors, the I think. Yeah, the vendors will have one bill for the entire trip when yes. the invoices will be one for each couple. Exactly. Yeah. That is exactly it. So let me show you how I would do it. And, and as you said before, it's a huge problem. And it is a huge problem. So with the deals, by default, you have only one contact name that can be assigned to a specific deal. Right? So right now, this deal, whatever, trip to Arizona, you will have here only one contact name. And this contact name will also be connected to Zoho Books. Are you doing uh, your bookkeeping with Zoho Books? Yes. <laughs> very good. Or trying. <laughs> no, no. It's, stay with it. It's, it's very good. It's, it's much better than, than the rest of the systems. So in that case, only this specific uh, contact will be connected to Zoho Books. And it doesn't matter if you have QuickBooks or other systems, you will still have the same problem. The way that you can do it is if you have here, where are my contact, one second, contact roles. So I can have in the contact roles, uh, let me just change some names here so it will make more sense. Sorry about it. And let's go to my deals and contact roles. And let's change some contact roles. Let's say, um, let's say couple or what will be the definition of a couple that's going for a trip. Santorini, are you? Is that what you want to? Santorini, is that what you mean by destination? No, I, I will show you in a second. Oh. Okay, so let's do vendor. That's that's fine. Okay, so let's do that. I am going back to my deals. I am creating, clicking on a new deal, and when I am going to the contact roles, I can assign people to this to this trip. And remember when we talked about it, for example, in the families? Yeah. So you can do it also based on family, like we said before. Uh, one second. Or you can go to more contact. I can search here someone from the group. And let's say that uh, Joe 14 is the guy. I can select him. Let's say Joe 14 will be one of the vendors on this deal or specifically, let's say, airfare or whatever it is. I can have here also few people that's actually going as couples to this trip. And when you have all those people, they will be listed as part of the deal. So you can see that Eric is a vendor. Uh, sorry, Eric is the main contact. Joe 14 is one of the vendors. Luis is one of the couples, and you can have here many people. So all of them connected to one deal. The problem is that you will need to go to each one of them and build them separately. You will not be able to do it uh, uh, from the deal automatically. Okay, okay. So, so that's, that's something. One more thing that can be done using some uh, scripting, it's 
to have some kind of a button here that will say create invoices. And when you click on it, it will basically go to each one of the couples. Let's say that you have five couples here. It will go to each one of them and it will send them an invoice with a set amount that is defined here. So let's say the amount is $1,000. It will just go and create an invoice for each one of them, which of course it can be done manually or using a script but there is no quick and easy solution for it. Okay. Um, another thing that probably will not work well, but let's try it. There is a limitation of uh, uh, five lookups, I think. Yeah. You have five lookups for every module and you can have some kind of a section We'll say let's say coupled, and for every couple you will have one person assigned, and that will be let's say couple one. You push it to the contacts, and that will be the deals. So you have five lookups, each one for each contact, and when you have your deal you will need to click one by one to assign them using the lookup. So it will look something like that. And then you will have here, let's say, uh, four, four or five people that are connected to this deal, but you're limited to five. When in this solution, you're not limited. Okay. I mean, right now, we, the way we have it is we have a trip. We have a primary contact. Everybody is either a primary contact and passenger or a passenger only. So, mm -hmm. so the primary contact would be the one getting, that would be the, like in the case of the couple, you'll have one cut, one partner is the primary mm -hmm. and the other is the passenger. So I guess that's the same. Yep. So the, the, cup, the couple will be a passenger. Yes. I, I wrote couple because you said couple, but I, it can be right. passenger or anything else. Right. And also vendors, you can have different vendors. Okay. Like hotel, um, transportation, uh, airfare, whatever it is. But you can have a different type of vendors. And then when you look at the deal, you can have an overview of all the people involved and only the people that are couple or passenger, for example, they you will build them. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. No, no problem. But it it is tricky. It's uh, there is no easy and quick solution here. So Lisa is saying that I put it on mute. Let's see. Yes, I did. Ah, sorry about it. Yeah, try try now, please. So you really didn't want me to talk, did you? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Look, it's it's a better problem than the one that I talked to myself for fifteen minutes when. I when my... I tried to get a heads up on that. I was on there <laughs> raising my hand. <laughs> I know. After no, it's, no good. it's anyone have questions? Yeah. <laughs> Open your camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would help, huh? Oh. No, it was still a good session. It ended up being really good. So Thank my you. question is we currently don't use deals. We go right from leads and convert them into an account. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the deals module and our leadership is kind of asking for some of those features where it tracks everything and gives you the percentage and the scoring and all that. Yeah. Um, when I, so my question is, is when you convert it, um, you convert a lead, it goes into a deal, but it also goes into an account. Is there any way for it not to go into an account until I say I close the deal? Yes. So let's say that you have, uh, you have the lead, right? Yes. You have the field company. Okay. If the field company will be empty, in this case, it's mandatory, right? But if it's the field company will not be here, then it will not create an account automatically. So this is the trigger. This is the craziness. That and it would be right to deal? Yeah, yeah. De deal is up to you. So let's say that, uh, let me just remove the restriction. And let's go to leads. Let's 
Such a great system. Everything is so easy. You know, with, with, with Salesforce, what we're doing here in a session of one hour would probably cost like $60,000. <laughs> it's just insane how everything is so simple with, with Zo. I like that it's customizable and I can go in and do whatever. It's awesome. So let's say that I'm creating here some kind of a lead and I don't have the company. When I'm going to convert the lead, you can see that it's just creating a new contact and I can also create a deal. But mm. from the other side, if I will go here and I will have a company and now I will convert it, you can see that a new account is created as well. Okay. So just just keep the the, the company name and you won't have, have the account. No problem. And mm -hmm. you do want to have deals. I know. Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> it's 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 a game changer. If you have the deals, now your reporting makes more sense. You have more uh, capabilities in terms of what you can do. You can follow what's happening in terms of uh, the monetary, uh, respectively of the, the money, what happening with the contact. You have tons of stuff you can do. It's very powerful. Without the deals, you're killing 50% of the system. Yeah, I know. I, I just kind of figured that out after watching the training videos that you have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I really, really feel we need to be using this. I just didn't want it to convert to an account because once it converts to an account, then that's saying those are our clients that we're managing and they're assigned a, a rep. Right. So, yep. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can skip this, uh, the accounts completely. You can also, by the way, if you don't want the accounts, you can just go and just hide it. So the accounts will not even be in your system. Yeah. Oh, we need it. That's how we manage most of our business right now. So <laughs> I see. We really can't hide it. But I wanted to go through a funnel basically first to be able to track all the progress and actually user progress on our leads, how they're actually, how many, how long it's taking them to actually convert a um, lead to a, an actual account. It's yep. part of been our challenge. And some of that stuff is in the, the deals module. So thank you. I will. No, no problem. That. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Okay. So let's go to Steve. And now I learned that I need to enable it. Steve. All right. Yes. I see the mic is on. Um, <laughs> we started to use the people module. Yes. And uh, I noticed that there's a new uh, tab there that says LMS. Is that uh, somebody told me that there was something new coming for LMS. Is that it right there? Or is there still something coming? You you kind of teased us that a lot was coming in the future. No, no, that one. W what's coming, I can't really talk about it. But, but what, about, what about LMS that's in people? Is that all uh, we're going to get? Yeah, this is this is the LMS. I, I wouldn't touch it now. I would wait a bit. It's still buggy. I, I try to do it with few clients and it's not there yet. Um, what I like to be in the MLS and it's no one said that it's coming or something like that. But what I like to see is that the LMS will be open to the public for my customers, for uh, students, for my employees. Right now it's only internal uh, for the organization internally, yes, which I think it's it's missing a point. A big part of uh, of a successful company is having some kind of uh, an onboarding for customers, or basic things that you like to send or give to your customers. And the MLS LMS is a, is a big part of it, and it's just not there yet. Okay. Yeah, but I, I don't think that anything uh, special with, will come to the LMS soon. They they did this, uh, I think it's like six months old or five months old, the system, and they're improving it. But I think it's far from what I what it's supposed to be. Okay, thanks very much. No no problem. Uh, until, until Daniel is uh, writing the question, I can share with you something very cool, actually. Uh, there is this... Uh, 
uh, let's see youtube.com there is a video that i uploaded a few months ago when i i selected this plugin and uh the reason that i chose uh, this plugin for sms the main reason is that it's the most advanced <clears throat> the most advanced in terms of uh, capabilities but also the developer that is uh, working on the project is very very good and he sent me a message uh, over the weekend that a feature that we were trying to to make it work is actually working and the feature is that whenever you have sms coming in the sms goes to the crm and it needs to be done from the crm itself but most people are on click because on my, uh, I don't have my cell phone here, but on the cell phone, I can have Zoho click. And when SMS is coming from a client, I can get it to my click. And then from click, I can respond and my client will get it as SMS. So SMS coming in goes to click, click responding goes to SMS. So I'm using what I love the most, which is click. My client is using what he likes the most, which is SMS. It's perfect. So we were able to make it work with WhatsApp and with SMS. So uh, uh, there are still some bugs with it. So it's not perfect, but it's awesome. And it's, it's, it's really, I, I think in a week, week and a half, you will have this feature working, which is awesome. Let's see the question. Currently, we use uh, web WhatsApp, but it's problematic. Later, nobody knows what was spoken. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, I think you're, you're, you mean that there is no history in a CRM, in a Zo CRM for this conversation from this web WhatsApp application. Am I correct? Yeah, no history. Yeah. So the, the, the feature that I'm talking about with, uh, ch check it out, check, check this video specifically. And uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. It's, it's common for, for many uh, plugins. Check, check this plugin. It's, you can have their free trial for, I think, like a month or so, or 15 days, whatever it is. But uh, check this plugin. It's very good, works with SMS and WhatsApp, and it's also connecting to your click, which is awesome. Okay, guys, thank you very much for, for your time. I, I'm logging off. I have a meeting that started four minutes ago, and uh, I will see you next week.